everybody, Andrew here from Polo Reef. Over the years, we have learned a lot about reef keeping. We are ready to pass that information and knowledge off to you. We are gonna be taking many concepts of the commercial aquarium and bringing them to the hobbyists. Welcome to Polo University. <laughs> Hey guys, Andrew here from Polo Reef. This episode we are calling Quarantine Basics Part 2, The Forgotten Tips. There were many things that last time uh, we need to elaborate on and make sure that these tips that we get through are followed. So the first thing I want to talk about is we talked about that hypothetical 20 gallon quarantine tank. Many times we've noticed that when fish come in, we separate them into which meds we want to quarantine them in, copper, chloroquine, or even tank transfer without meds. And so if you can, we think buying two 20 gallons or bigger 40 gallon tanks at, at the same time and having two ready to go with separate filtration and separate everything makes a lot of sense. There are plenty of times where there are fish in the hospital tank and you're treating them in one and then a new fish comes arrives and you can't put those fish together, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes there's fighting going on, sometimes a fish comes in that needs to be treated with an antibiotic first before copper. And so having two is better than one. That's tip number one. Second thing, always have biomedia available. Keep a bag of Seachem Matrix or the spheres or bio balls, any of that stuff. Keep them in your sump somewhere, They're just laying in a in a carbon bag, you're going to need it in your hang on the back filter. Now, very important, once you do that, don't go back to the stash and introduce more once the meds are in, because you might be introducing more parasites back into the quarantine tank. Do it the first time, make sure you have enough, and don't go back. And as long as we're talking about the don't go back route, the other thing also holds true. If you're one of those guys that want to put things back in your display, like you put live rock into the quarantine tank, don't do that. That live rock is full of copper and parasites. Bleach it, get rid of it, don't use it. Same thing with the bio bogs, guys. Don't put them back in the display tank. In fact, none of the stuff can go back into the display tank unless it's bleached and sterilized. Okay, one more important point, cross-contamination. Make sure you have two sets of siphons, two pumps when you're doing water changes. Don't use the quarantine hoses for water changes or anything and put them back into your main display. Don't use them. Keep them separate. And that especially goes for if you have a sick fish in there, because then you know you have a 100% chance of contaminating your main display. Two sets, call it quarantine set, display set. That goes for thermometers, heaters, anything. Those are the, the big four. And now I just want to talk a little bit about other techniques that came to my attention pertaining to the bag opening, etc. So the fish come in in a bag. First thing you need to do is obviously look at them. We talked about that. Observe them in the bag. Are they laying on their back already, half dead? Can they take the stress? Do they have a bacterial infection that needs attention first? Are they loaded with ick and velvet already and you know you have a contaminated fish? So observing those fish, very important. We'll get into the meds and how to deal with that the next episode. I want to go into a little bit about the bag opening. I told you last time that the ammonia is toxic once you open that bag and that oxygen goes in. And we talked about 
priming the bag with Seachem Prime. I want to warn you a couple of things about that. One, make sure you don't go th on the prime directions and add the amount of, f of prime that it says at first. If you read down the, the bottle, you will see that it takes four to five times the dose to detoxify ammonia and nitrite. So you probably need more than you think. Just a general rule, like in a 50 gallon tank, I usually use 30, 35 mils of prime. So, and, and in a bag, we tend to use a, a capful of prime. Negative of prime is it has the ability to suck oxygen out of the water which is just as dangerous or more dangerous than the ammonia, which is why people have alerted me different methods of opening the bag up, and I want to highlight them to you. Several people only use a pinhole hole to get a sample of water and then duct tape it, clip it, there are stickers. There's all sorts of ways where you're not opening the bag up. The key is to get the salinity to know what salinity the fish is in and how your quarantine tank compares. And the more people I talk to, the more people will change their quarantine water and add RO to match the bag, then put the fish through the prime and the mixing. And you can always raise the salinity up at a different time, at a different date, slowly. If you feel you must have the same salinity as your quarantine tank and you're mixing water, make sure you add an air stone, especially if you primed it, because that stuff sucks the oxygen out. So you're mixing the water, you're dripping the water fast. I don't like to do it more than 30 minutes, unless it's so different, the water. Put an air stone in there. Make sure the right amount of prime is in there. Better yet, lower your quarantine tank if there are no other fish in there. If there are other fish in there, you're not gonna be able to do that. Guys, the second big no-no on Seachem Prime, we must talk about it. Seachem Prime breaks the bond in a lot of coppers and makes them more toxic to the fish. It's why we only use copper power. Copper power, which is actually made by a different company than Seachem Prime, and Prime can be used together. So if you're mixing waters, acclimating the fish, either drip method or bartender method, if you have copper power in your tank, in your quarantine tank, with Prime, this is no problem. Copper safe, I'm told it's okay also, but I'm not sure I never use the product. What we must be most careful about, wholesalers will use regular copper sulfate with citric acid or cupramine. If you use cupramine or copper sulfate, do not, and I will repeat that, do not use Prime. Prime will make that stuff toxic and the fish will just keel over. If you're not sure, ask the wholesaler or a local fish store what kind of copper he's using. This is the second reason why people like to open their bag with a little pin and adjust the water in their quarantine. They don't want to use Prime in the bag. So that goes for the bag or your hospital tank. Prime, copper power, good. Other coppers, no good. In fact, it's kind of strange that Seachem, which is the maker of Prime, would make a copper such as cupramine, which is an ionic type of copper, because it does not go with Seachem Prime. I'm not a big fan of it. It's rough on the fish. We're going to be talking about this product later anyway in the next video. I just thought it was a significant importance to tell you. So 
If you're worried about the oxygen suck in the bag and you're worried about the copper, don't use prime. Open that bag very gradually with the pin, take the sample out, make the changes you need. If you know it's copper power, no problem at all. A lot of fish stores will ship in fresh seawater also with no copper in it. That's not a problem. Problem is anything other than copper power. More tips. A lot of people forget to take out the carbon on these hang on the back filters. You put one of those carbon sleeve, the, the sleeve in for the aqua clear, etc. And there's carbon in there, the little black pellets. Get them out. They're going to pull your medication out. Very important. Also, in your filtration, try to have those bio balls, the bio media, the spheres. Make, fill that up in the hang of the back filter. Maybe a piece of floss uh, on top, etc. That's all you need. Another big important tip. A lot of people that quarantine don't have enough water around on hand. Things come up in this hobby where you have to alter course, change meds, add an antibiotic, and you have to do water changes with that. And sometimes the ammonia spikes and you don't know why. And prime makes the water cloudy and it's not, after four or five times, you're probably gonna wanna change that water anyway. So don't do this without, ha without having at least the same amount of water around stored as the quarantine tanks. Have it available. You can, we do 80, 90% water changes every four or five days all the time. Feeding. Know your fish, know what they eat. If they have small mouths and you're quarantining anthias, they're not gonna eat pellets. Just make sure you have the right food already so that they don't stress out. Make sure you have the little eggs work great. ROE eggs, the oyster eggs, calanus, little red uh, cyclops, essentially. And if you're quarantining big fish, make sure you have some prawns and krill for them, etc. Larry's chunky. In the next episode, we're gonna get, go over specifically how we medicate, what medications to use, when we literally have to change strategies, et cetera, et cetera. And so that will be the next video in the advanced section. For now, Polar Reef here, giving you these tips, signing out. Thanks, guys.